On 1st of October, 1949, it was in Beijing, in the Tiananmen Square, and Tiananmen means Gate of Heavenly Peace, where Chairman Mao announced, after liberating China, and I quote, today the Chinese people have stood up. And that was the beginning of the success of the Chinese Revolution. The Communist Party of China, which led the struggle for rejuvenation under the leadership of Chairman Mao, was formed in July 1921. And they had to go through a historic struggle. And this struggle for modernization, for independence, for liberation from the yoke of feudalism, for liberation from the yoke of foreign hegemony, entailed a lot of sacrifices. And if you want to understand today's China, you have to understand China's strategic culture. I personally have been very fortunate that I have had first-hand experience of this historic transition of China in the last four decades. I first went to China as a 16-year-old student of FC College, second year, in the 1970s. And I saw the China of Chairman Mao, the China of Premier Zhou Enlai, and the China of Marshal Tudor. At that time, there was one flight from Pakistan which went to China. And we were the only non-communist country which connected China to the outside world, apart from Air France. We started first, Air France came later. And China was then poor, China was then weak, China was then isolated. Today's China is rich. Today's China is a global leader in economy, in climate change, in diplomacy. And today's China is well connected with the outside world. And there are three or four ingredients of China's strategic culture which are unique because China is the only country in the history of mankind which has risen peacefully without occupation, without aggression, without conquest, without colonization. So just briefly, what are these ingredients of China's strategic culture that we talk about? First, the Silk Road. You say, Urdu me shara hai, resham kehte hain. Do hazar saal pehle, agaz uska chin se hua. The Silk Road started from China, the city of Xi'an, and it connected what is now Pakistan, what is now Iran, what is now the Middle East with Europe, with Venice with other places. And the Silk Road was the first instance of globalization connecting countries and civilizations and continents through commerce and also culture. And that is why the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said 1400 years ago, seek knowledge even if you have to go to China, because China even 1400 years ago was an advanced, educated civilization. So that is one. China has always been about globalization, about connectivity. And today, under the leadership of President Xi Jinping, the Silk Road has been revived through the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, of which CPAC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, is the pillar, the pivot, 
and the flagship. And China, in the last 10 years, when BRI was launched, has invested $1 trillion in 3,000 projects, leading to 450,000 jobs being generated all over the world. And we know the CPEX success story here. The second important ingredient about China's strategic culture, which shapes their vision and their worldview, is the Great Wall, which is built over centuries. And what is the Great Wall? It is protective. It is defensive against outside aggression. So that shows China has a peaceful worldview, peaceful intentions, more defensive, more protective. That was the Great Wall. The third component of the strategic culture is the Long March under the leadership of the Communist Party. In 1934 and 35, thousands of kilometers, 100,000 people started off in the Long March under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, Chairman Mao. Only 20,000 survived. But the Long March shows China's patience, persistence, perseverance, a never give up philosophy that they say, okay, once we have embarked on a path, to Chin ke hawale se tarikh mein dekhe, to unka ek bada waze raha hai ke apna difa karna, jo great wall ki embat karte hai, China wahed mulke jis ne tarakki ki hai, or bari takat bana hai, puraman tarikhe se, kisi ke khlaaf jariyat ni ki, kisi ke mulk par kabza ni kiya. किसी के मुल्क के खिलाफ कोई कॉलोनी नहीं बनाई अपनी कुवत के साथ मेहनत के साथ सलाहियत के साथ क्योंकि चीन वाहिद मुल्क है जो एक मुल्क नहीं है एक सिविलाइजेशन भी है 5000 साल पुरानी जिसकी ज़बान 5000 साल पुरानी से लिखी जा रही है तो उस हवाले से चीन का जो आजकल का जो एक क्लीदी किरदार है वो बहुत अहम है एंड वी इन पाकिस्तान आर वेरी फॉर्चूनेट that China is not just our no great northern neighbor, China is our best friend, China is a strategic partner, and China has stood by Pakistan on all our core interests, on all occasions. Har martaba, jab mokha mila, Chin ne Pakistan ka saath diya, chitan ki tarah khada hua. Har issue par, har mokhe par, aur mein baat kar raha har issue par, हर मौके पर फाटा हो जाए, बरूनी दबाव हो जाए, कोविड 19 हो जाए, कश्मीर का मसला हो जाए, पाकिस्तान का अपने हवाले से जो कोर इंटरेस्ट एंड दिफा के हवाले से वो भी हो जाए, हर हवाले से चीन आपका साथ देता है और हमें भी बड़ा फखर है कि हम भी चीन के एंड वी आल्सो आर वेरी प्राउड ऑफ़ द फैक्ट दैट ऑन � Pakistan is one country which stands steadfast with China, supporting China on all its core interests, whether it's the territorial integrity, unity, and sovereignty of China, whether it's the paramount role of the Communist Party of China in Chinese uh, political system, whether it's the peaceful rise of China, whether it's the one China policy on Taiwan, whether it's the issue of Xinjiang, whether it's the issue of Tibet, whether it's the issue of Hong Kong, whether it's the issue of South China Sea, whether it's the Belt and Road Initiative, whether it's the Global Development Initiative, GDI, or the Global Security Initiative, uh, GSI, or the Global Civilization Initiative, GCI, launched by President Xi Jinping, we stand with China as China stands with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. इस वक्त दुनिया में एक बहुत बड़ी तब्दीली आ रही है। अलामा इकबाल ने फरमाया था नब्बे साल पहले, देख मशरक से उबरते हुए सूरज को देख, गरा खाब चीनी संभलने लगे, हिमाला के चश्मे उबलने लगे, गया दौर सरमाया दारी गया, तमाशा दिखा के मदारी क्या? The great poet of the East who gave the vision for Pakistan made a historic prediction 90 years ago, 
See the sun rising in the east. He predicted the rise of the Asian century. And he also predicted the rise of China 90 years ago, where he talked of springs of hope emerging in the Himalayas and the great Chinese nation rising from slumber. And that was prediction which has come true today. And from this تاریخ کے حوالے سے طاقت کا جو عالمی توازن ہے اقتصادی اور سیاسی اور میں ثقافتی بھی شامل کروں گا وہ مغرب سے مشرق کی طرف منتقل ہو رہا ہے the balance of economic cultural and political power is shifting from the west to the east in the 21st the Asian century in which China's peaceful rise and Pakistan's role are all pivotal in this new emerging scenario. We welcome that. But I would also like to warn, kuch kuvate hain, jo nai sar jang ki baat karte hain, jo containment ki baat karte hain, jo cold war ki baat karte hain, jo tazad, taksim, tasadum ki baat karte hain, hum is soch ko rad karte hain. کیونکہ اکیسویں صدی میں ایشیا اب نئی سرد جنگ کا متحمل نہیں ہو سکتا and we reject any talk of a new cold war of containment of confrontation of conflict because in the 21st century the Asian century we cannot afford that kind of a mindset which talks of dividing Asia and there is no threat from China. China is a peaceful country. China's worldview is based on promoting equality, diversity, inclusivity in global politics. They are not trying to impose their hegemony or their philosophy or their values on any other country. They believe in win-win cooperation, and the Belt and Road Initiative is a shining example of this win-win cooperation, where over 150 countries and 32 organizations are there. Or we are very proud of that, and we are very happy that China has invested in Pakistan at that time, 10 years ago, when in CPEC, when no country, not Maghreb, not Muslim, was ready to put it in place of Pakistan. کیونکہ اس وقت دہشتگردی تھی عدم استحکام تھا اس قطعے میں افغانستان کی صورتحال امریکی فوج بھی تھی 26 بلین ڈالرز آف انویسمنٹ 8000 میگا ویٹس آف الیکٹریسٹی اوور 200,000 جابز جنریٹڈ 28,000 پاکستانی سٹوڈنٹس سٹڈنگ ان چائنا اوور 600 کلومیٹرز آف ہائی ویز اور روڈز over uh, 800 kilometers of uh, uh, new transmission lines. You can see Gwada port. And since the overseas, uh, just Pakistan uh, Overseas Chinese Youth Federation is also led, I think is a good example of women power, I will say that in Thar, if you go, thanks to CPEC, thanks to China's support, we see women, Thari women, driving dumper trucks. Mining is taking place. The coal is becoming generated into electricity. And the electricity is going to the national grid. So this is an example of the CPEX success story. And this is also an example of local community empowerment. Both leadership of Pakistan and China believe that the future will be shaped by youth and women. Chairman Mao said, women hold half the sky. And Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the great leader of Pakistan, the founder of Pakistan, also said that unless the youth and women are mobilized, we will not get an, a free state, an independent state. So this is the commonality. The future belongs to the youth. And as Chairman Mao rightly said, 
Nothing is hard in this world if you dare to scale the heights. And we have seen it, the success story of China before our own eyes, how China moved forward, how China progressed and built a new society, a better, peaceful and prosperous China. And we hope that we can also contribute to building this new community of shared destiny along with China during the coming decades, inshallah. Long live Pakistan-China friendship. And a special congratulations to our Chinese friends. We share in their joy, we share in their happiness, and it's also the Mid-Autumn Festival. Congratulations to you on that also. Thank you so much, and all the best to the leadership of the women's leadership, which is doing a great job, mashallah. And thank you to the media for their support. Thank you very much.